Dear students, welcome to the seventh online class of Control System Engineering. In previous class, we studied how to find equations of motion for a system with the help of inspection method for a degree of freedom equal to or a degree of freedom equal 3. Then we studied transfer function for system with gears. In this, we studied various relations for torque, angular displacement, radius of the disc and number of teeth along circumference of the disc. Then we studied effect on mechanical impedances driven by gear. By gear. In this we analyzed how we can reflect impedances from input to output or output to input by just multiplying gear ratio square. And this ratio is number of teeth of gear on Destination shaft divided by number of teeth of teeth of gear on source shaft whole square. Dear students, after completing this lecture, you will be able to find transfer function for system with gears, with or without gear losses. And also we will study how to find transfer function for electromechanical systems. Students, contents of this lecture are we will study transfer function for gate rings and then we will study how to find transfer function for gates having losses. Then we will start electromechanical system in which we will study DC motor, study DC motor, its transfer function, mechanical load analysis, and a dynamometer test. Dear students, now we will start gear train. A gear train is used to eliminate gears with large radius or a gear train is used to implement the gear ratio by cascading smaller gear ratios. In this replacement, in this replacement of a large radius disc with multiple small radius gears requires the gear ratio must be the same. In the figure, a gear train is represented. With the help of gear train, gear train, we can introduce variation between speed and torque of the system. Like if you see an example of bicycle or a car, with changing the gears, we can make variations in the speed and torque of a system and torque of a system as per requirements now students the schematic diagram of gear train is represented where angular displacement covered by input is theta 1 of t then second gear is having angular displacement of theta 2 which is equal to the ratio of n1 over n2 multiplied by theta multiplied by theta 1 the third stage is having angular displacement of theta 3 which is equal to the product of ratios of n1 over n2 and n3 over n4 and this whole multiply by theta 1. At fourth stage angular displacement is, displacement is theta 4 and is equal to the product of ratios of n1 over n2, n3 over n4 and n5 over n6 and this whole multiplied by theta 1 and with this gear ratio we can introduce changes in this changes in the speed or torque dear students now we will find transfer function for a system with gear trains having losses in previous examples we were considering that gears are lossless but now in this case these gears will be having some inertial or viscous damping components. In this example, we have to find transfer function theta 1 of s over t1 of s. Now, if you look at the figure, this system consists of three stages. The input torque is applied at first stage. Angular, angular displacement of first shaft is theta 1 of t. It is connected with gears 
n1 and n2 at second stage angular displacement will be theta 2 at third stage we will be having angular displacement of theta 3 which is having an inertial load of j5 second stage and third stage are connected with gates n3 and n4 now j1 and d1 are inertial and damping components of first gear j2 j2 d2 are inertial and damping components of second gear third gear is having only inertial component which is j3 and fourth gear is having inertial component which is j4 for our desired transfer function theta 1 of s theta 1 of s or t1 of s first of all we will find mechanical impedances in laplace domain and then we will reflect all the impedances to the input shaft having angular displacement of theta 1 dear students if you look at figure 1 we know that gear ratios are not same for all mechanical impedances and we have to reflect all the impedances of stage 2 and stage 3 to the input side so mechanical impedances of second stage are d2 j2 and j3 they will be reflected to first stage by multiplying gear ratio square which is n1 over n2 now now the impedances of third stage which include j4 and j5 first they will transfer to second stage by multiplying gear ratio square n3 or n4 and then they will transfer to first stage by multiplying n1 over n2 whole square the result of reflecting all the impedances to, to input stage is represented in figure 2 having input torque t1 angular displacement of theta 1 with equivalent inertial component represented by je and equivalent damping component represented by de students after reflecting the impedances and finding a figure for equivalent system now we will find transfer function after applying finding the rules of transfer function for a rotational mechanical system we will be having equation of motion for this for this system which will be j e s square plus d e s plus theta 1 of s and will be equal to t 1 of s now j equivalent is equivalent inertia of stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 where equivalent damping constant d e is equivalent of viscous damping components d1 and d2 our transfer function will be g of s equals theta 1 of s over t1 of s and this can also be represented in a block diagram form where t1 is one is input torque and theta 1 is angular displacement covered where j equivalent and d equivalent are equivalent impedances experienced by input torque dear students our next topic is electromechanical systems these are hybrid systems and made up of electrical and mechanical systems in these systems either we have electrical input mechanical output output or mechanical input electrical output various examples are antenna azimuth position control system robots control sun and star tracker computer tap disk drive position control system very common example in our real life are fan in which we have electrical input and a mechanical output dear students now under electromechanical system we will start a DC motor in this we will find out how to find a transfer function for a DC motor D 
DC motor is an electromechanical system which gives us displacement output when voltage is applied. So in this we have electrical input and mechanical output. Now we will study how to find transfer function for this electromechanical system with the help of schematic diagram given in figure A and we will represent transfer function in block diagram form as shown in figure B. Dear students, for transfer function, see the schematic diagram of a DC motor given in the figure. We have permanent magnets or stationary magnets in a DC motor which produces a magnetic field known as, as fixed field. Now as rotating circuit called armature through which the current IA of T flows passes through the fixed magnetic field at right angles and feel the force which is equal to magnetic field strength field strength multiplied by length of the inductor multiplied by current passing through it. This force tend to rotate the rotor through which a torque is developed. The resulting torque turns the rotor and the rotating member of the rotor. Dear students, we also have a second phenomena that occurs in motor. As we studied earlier, when current passes through armature and armature is in fixed feet, it produces a force through which it rotates. Now a conductor moving at right, ang at right angle to magnetic field generates a voltage equals to magnetic field strength multiplied by length of conductor multiplied by velocity. And this voltage is produced at the terminals of the conductor. And the voltage produced at the terminal of the moving conductor is dependent on the angular velocity through which it is rotating. And this voltage is known as electromotive force or back EMF, which is directly proportional to the rate of change of, change of angular displacement. And the proportionality constant is known as back EMF constant. Taking Laplace transform, we will get equation highlighted here. Further, we will use the relation that angular velocity omega m of t is equal to rate of change of angular displacement. Dear students, now to find relation between armature current, applied voltage and back EMF we will replace passive electrical components with their impedances in Laplace domain and then we will apply KVL resulting in equation armature resistance RA multiplied by current through it impedance caused by armature inductance back EMF voltage and this will be equal to applied source voltage EA of S now we know that, know that torque developed by motor is directly proportional to the armature current and here proportionality constant is motor torque constant which depends on the motor and magnetic field characteristics. In set of units the value of motor torque constant and back EMF constants are equal. Students, now we have a loop equation from previous slide. In this equation, we will substitute value of armature current and back EMF voltage. And with this, we will have an equation whose variable are torque, angular displacement and input voltage. We are finding transfer function in terms of variable angular displacement theta m of s and 
input voltage Ea of s. Now to find torque in terms of angular displacement, we will study mechanical model of a DC motor which consists of equivalent inertia at armature represented by Jm and this include both armature inertia and load inertia which is reflected to armature. Viscous damping at armature is represented by coefficient dm and this include both viscous damping of armature and viscous damping of load and which is also reflected to the armature. Students, here we have equation of motion for mechanical part of system with which torque is equal to equivalent inertia of the motor multiplied by S square damping constant dm multiplied by S and theta, theta m of S. Substituting this in the previous equation, we will get our desired equation whose variables are angular displacement theta m of s and input voltage e of s students here we make an assumption here we make an assumption that armature inductance is small compared to armature resistance which is usual for a dc motor so with this assumption armature inductance equivalent to zero we will further simplify the equation and after little rearrangements we will obtain we will obtain our desired transfer function whose output is angular displacement and input is applied voltage. For further simplification purpose, the numerator of transfer function is made, is made equivalent to constant k where in denominator the terms without Laplace operators are made equal to constant alpha and with this our transfer function for DC motor will further reduce to the form form k divided by s into s plus alpha and this will be our desired transfer function whose input is applied voltage and output is angular displacement in design process through this we can measure for what type of input Ea of s, Ea of s, what type of angular displacement will be covered by the DC motor? Dear students, now we will do mechanical load analysis for DC motor. In forming a transfer function for DC motor, we have used equivalent mechanical load which is represented in figure 1. In this equivalent inertia and equivalent viscous damp equivalent viscous damping constants were used. Now we will explore what these equivalent quantities are. For this, look at the figure 2, which gives us DC motor driving a rotational mechanical load connected with the help of gears. The number of teeth along the circumference teeth along the circumference of input gear is represented by N1 where number of teeth on the circumference of output gears is represented by N2. The mechanical load consists of inertia JL and viscous damping coefficient DL. DL. Now to find equivalent inertia at armature or equivalent viscous damping at armature, we will reflect both load inertia and viscous damping of the load to the armature side. For, for this reflection, we will use gear ratio square. So equivalent mechanical load experienced by DC motor will consist of equivalent inertia Jm and equivalent viscous damping constant Dm, Dm where Jm is inertia of armature and inertia of load reflected with the help of gear ratio square. Similarly, the equivalent viscous damping constant will be equal to 
viscous damping constant of of armature and viscous damping constant of load reflected with the help of gear ratio square equations of both quantities equivalent motor inertia and equivalent with an equivalent viscous damping constant are highlighted dear students we have studied various constants used in transfer function now we'll study how to find values of these constants with the help of dynamometer test for this test we use torque and speed of a motor under the condition of constant applied voltage for this relation we will use equation given here and we reach to this equation by applying kvl at electrical part of the dc motor then substituting values of armature current and back emf voltage and then assuming that inductance of armature is negligible compared to resistance as this equation is in laplace domain so we will take inverse laplace transform to get time domain relation and we'll reach to second icon of the slide now we assume that motor is operating in steady state with a constant dc voltage so there will be no changes in torque and angular velocity of the dc motor when applied voltage is constant so we will reach in of the slide dear students now we will solve the equation from last slide and we'll reach to equation which will relate motor torque with angular velocity and graph of motor torque versus angular velocity is shown in the figure for any constant for any constant applied voltage ea we will be having torque to speed curve and this plot is known as torque speed curve now to find the constant we will find intercept of these curves in the first equation of the slide to find maximum torque or stall torque will occur if angular velocity is equal to 0 which mean a system will apply maximum torque to rotate the motor but due to limitation due to limitations it will not move and this torque is known as stall torque and for second variable we will assume that torque is equal to 0 replacing this in the first equation we will get maximum speed of the dc motor dc motor and this will be equal to ea or kb where t stall is equal to kt over ra multiplied by ea dear students now we will find the constants from the relation of stall torque and no load angular speed rearranging both equations we will get kt over ra which is motor torque constant over armature resistance tens will be equal to stall torque divided by applied voltage and back emf constant will be equal to applied voltage ea divided by no load angular speed of the dc motor dear students now with the help of example we will find transfer function for dc motor with the help of data given in figure a and b we have to find transfer function theta l over ea of s which means the transfer means the transfer function will relate angular displacement covered by load when electrical voltage is applied to the dc motor students we will start the solution by finding equivalent inertia and equivalent viscous damping for dc motor under the topic of mechanical load analysis we have relations that equivalent inertia is equal to inertia of armature 
plus inertia plus inertia of load multiplied by gear ratio square similarly equivalent viscous damping constant is equal to viscous damping coefficient of armature plus viscous damping coefficient of load multiplied by gear ratio square to square substituting the values from the figure we have equivalent load inertia is equal to 12 and equivalent viscous damping constant is equal to 10 now we will find electrical constants using the torque speed curve given in the given in the figure of example from torque speed curve we have T stall is equal to 500 no load velocity is 50 and applied electrical voltage is, is 100 volt dear students now after finding values of various quantities we will find out electrical constant now from dynamometer test from the relation of t stall we have kt over ra is equal to t to t stall divided by ea and this is equal to 5 where from second part which is no load speed we have kb is equal to ea over no load angular velocity of tc motor and this is equal to 2 to 2 now we have transfer function for dc motor which is theta m over ea substituting these values we obtain a numerator of 0 0.417 divided by s into s plus 1.667 where the desired where the desired transfer function is load angular displacement divided by applied voltage so for this we will use gear ratio and find out motor angle in terms of load angle substituting this we will obtain our desired transfer function now n1 now n1 over n2 is equal to 1 over 10 so our desired transfer function load angle of dc motor divided by applied voltage will be equal to numerator of 0 0.0417 divided by s plus 1.667 whole multiplied by s s where s is Laplace operator and this is our desired transfer function this transfer function can also be represented in block diagram form where input of the system is applied voltage ea of s where output is load angle theta l of theta l of s this can also be used for design purpose to analyze the load angle when various type of input signals are applied now if any of you have any questions please ask